many sights to see And when I look in my window So many different people to be That it's strange So strange You got to pick up every Hello traders, Gary Wagner here it is Wednesday, July the 20th, approximately 10.40 a.m. in Honolulu, Hawaii. And this is the Daily Report for Gold. As we speak, you can see that we once again have $1,600 gold. When we take a look in terms of the market move itself, I want to start with my shorter term chart this morning. This is a 240 minute chart. Of course, it's in Henkin format. And on this, I actually overlap the candles. It uh, gives me a more dimensional effect, I should say, in terms of the marketplace itself. And it's quite clear. We talked about the other day, the fact that typically when this market blazes to new highs and especially when those new highs tend to be what I'll call major benchmarks. Major benchmarks of course would be 1500, 1600, 1700, 1000, those even numbers like that. My sentiment is and was that you typically don't get those blown through the roof and overtaken in one battle. And therefore, as we saw this market move up, and this is that last move up, uh, you know, from 1575, as it came up, we had on the 240 minute chart, of course, very solid indications that it was coming down. Of course, yesterday, we looked at the fact that this was a golden opportunity, uh, both in gold and silver, to go ahead and buy the dip. So I'm hoping that uh, clients out there, subscribers out there, were able to take advantage of that move and to add to that position. As you can see, the Henkin candle, we did get this, this doji candle. And what I've done is I've compressed the candle size so you can actually see this doji a little bit better. But you can see this doji type, what I'll call the pivot point candle right in here. You had a double bottom. And this last candle, in other words, the last four hours in trading, you can see just how strong it's been. Lack of the lower tail, very large size body. Compare that body size, it really appears as though it was the same body size, actually a little bit bigger than these that started this last trend up to the 1600. And you can see as this market begins to trade, usually at the beginning of that uptrend, you get these really large bodies in the market. And so that when we see a body size like this, it gives me further indication on a technical basis that in fact, we are headed back to higher territory. Uh, we had 1600, it's quite obvious and quite easy to take out these highs roughly at the 1610. And as you know, my first target in the marketplace was 1608 to 1614. On today's report, I wanna spend a little time and talk to you about our next target. Now, one of the other things that I want to quickly look at, we're going to move to our 360 minute chart. This is the chart that we have been using lately for our Elliott Wave, both minor and major counts. And as you can see, I have added a couple of numeric sequences, in other words, to the count. Obviously, within Wave 5, which is what I believe we're in right now, this is our first of the impulse minor count. And in terms of that minor count, of course, this would be wave one, it's an impulse wave. And that impulse wave took us from roughly 1480 all the way up to 1610. Now, there might be those out there that say that you know what, this dip that we experienced was way too shallow to be a retractive or corrective wave. And that might be the case. We'll have to see what his, how history bears out. But I can tell you this, 1577 is a 23% retracement of this entire move, this entire move that we have just witnessed. So when we consider it and look at it in that way, you can see that it came very, very close at 23%. You can see that it is feasible, in fact, that we are looking at the conclusion of two and that we are now 
actually moving into the third impulse wave. Now, when we look at some of the other short corrective waves, during these bull runs, they can be very, very short. These are the minor counts. Of course, when we look at the major count, this last particular move, and this, this move here, which we're labeling as an ABC correction, was a long and protracted, long and protracted event. If we take a look at two, the bottom of two, or our complete impulse wave three, we can see that was also very, very long and protracted. So that what I am most impressed with is the type of ground that gold covered and the period of time that it covered it in. And that's why that, that was the single greatest rally, I still think we're in it by the way, in the last 31 years in gold. Quite incredible to say the least. Now I want to look at our weekly chart in two ways. First, this is of course our Hankin chart. And as you can see, because it is a weekly chart, there's been really no violation. We're still working off of that all-time record high. It's still within that same week. So we'll have to see how it pans out. It's quite obvious when we consider this breakout, you had the market come down, you had on a weekly chart that consolidating candle, that doji, our pivot point, and then we had the move to the upside, just like this right in here. Now, the next thing we wanna do is take a look at this same chart, but convert it back into a standard candlestick chart. And you can see that when we do do that, what we are looking at, of course, this is only Wednesday, so this is the week here. You can see this tremendous move up. You can see that the, the range that it had was also tremendous. And the fact that we did in fact break back above our trend line here, once we convert it to a candlestick chart. And then lastly, what I wanna cover is my next projection or where I think this market has the potential to go to right now. <clears throat> this of course is our Fibonacci extension chart. It is in Hinkin format. It gives us a, uh, a clear idea. I've kind of moved these over so we can see these candles, but here's what I find so interesting. As this marketplace moved up, of course, it hit our contract historical new high right in here. You can see that in terms of a daily chart, a double uh, top, so to speak, or, or equal tops. Then you get on this Henkin, of course, you get a consolidation candle right here. And you also see that in terms of a straight retracement, this is 38% of this longer move right in here. The difference is, is that when I'm running a retracement from here, I'm running it from the record high. When we looked at the last chart that was 23%, that was a different data point. And my belief right now, my belief right now is that if we have in fact found the bottom, which I believe we certainly could have, then the next target, of course, it's, it's got to come in and match this particular target. That, of course, is the next place for it to go, which is going to be to take out that record top. But at that point, it really has nowhere to go on a technical basis because we're in uncharted territory. And 1641 to 1647, this is my next band that I feel we have really good potential to see the gold market move to, somewhere in that area. The really critical numbers, we do have another number up here at 1680. This is my higher belief, but as you know, I am an advocate of looking at something that's called Fibonacci harmonics. Harmonics are simply looking for two different time sequences to come up with roughly the same data point in terms of a, a critical area. So for that reason, my belief right now is that we have a decent and good probability, I will say, that we will see gold go and trade as high as 1640 on this next rally. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye. Many sights to see And when I look in my window 
so many different people to be That it's strange So strange You got to pick up everything 